Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office. I've been a busy little bee, and uh, you're watching this through a, a sort of new setup. I've uh, done away with my batteries for my camera, and I've made a, a sort of magical infinity battery where it uh, will power my camera from the mains. And I uh, also took the opportunity to sort of brighten up the settings a little bit because I don't do colour grading in my videos because I one don't have the skills and two I don't have the time so I'm doing the uh, colour grading back in the camera to try to bring back the old back office feel it, it, the videos went a little cold didn't they for a while but hopefully they should be slightly more orange I have this box today as a sort of as we're going to do our maiden test of this uh, new setup I have this box that uh, I've ordered actually I did order this because there's something you always need. I'm going to cover the label because we don't we don't want to see the sender. They might be embarrassed about this, but do, 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 do. it's the most essential thing. You always need a lot of when you're in my line of tinkering, and that's kettle leads. That's because, of course, you go through an awful lot of them. We use them for everything, and I'm always cutting them up and. Um, sort of hard wiring thing. So I use both ends. Sometimes I'll cut off a kettle lead to use the plug end on something. And then other times I'll be cutting this off because I'll be hard wiring this into sort of a, you know, part of some infrastructure like an arcade cab where it needs uh, monitors all powered off from one switch. And I'm always running out. So this time I went on eBay and I decided to invest the sort of, I don't know what these were, four quid, I think, for seven kettle leads. Um, now, there are actually something interesting about kettle leads. You know, they're not all built the same. Um, so when you get them, be a bit careful with them and the types of device you're using them on. So I've just spotted one here. And look, this one doesn't have an earth. And I believe these are pretty common on Xbox power supply. So that's great. I've got like an Xbox lead. However, as you can see, of course, a standard kettle lead would work because the Xbox doesn't have the pin. So even that will fit in the same way. We'll put that one aside. Oh, these, have I got two? Two Xbox leads. Are these ones? Ugh. I think I've been sort of done. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, so I've got two Xbox leads. These are slightly yes, less useful in my sort of line of tinkering. So that's why I'm kind of that bit enraged. Because if your socket has an earth in it, which uh, most panel uh, sockets do, and I've got a whole bag of them that I use, um, these aren't going to fit. But maybe, you know, maybe I could sort of flog those on the black market Xbox scene. Now, onwards with the rest. When you get these, make sure you really take a good close look at the ratings. And uh, we're not going to cover today crap ones. I've had plenty of crap ones of these where they've actually um, got such thin wire in them, they could no way even match the rating of the fuse and the cable would go on fire. But this one, you can see a little uh, circle there in that corner there. 13 amps. So that's the full amount of current that's allowed in a UK British plug. Um, so this would be normally used for powering something like, oh, pardon me, <coughs> frog in my throat, something like a, literally a kettle you could use. Um, you could probably power a bar fire, which would be pretty dangerous if there's bar fires with kettle connectors. Um, or like plasma TVs, you know, big things, things that use a lot of juice. So, um, and then you can just open that up real quick gentle lag open it up and then have a quick look you should have a brown fuse so if you're you, you like, to be honest it doesn't really matter if it's got less than a, a brown fuse other than the fuse might pop in your particular device if it's a 13 amp device but you can always put a lower rated fuse in the higher rated fitting so that's fine you're actually making it probably a little bit safer if anything so we're just going to check the fuse and i don't normally check the fuse but let's just do that and that's how you test the fuse so you can see there's continuity, the meter's buzzing, that's because the wire is still in there. Great. So we've made sure that that's the right fuse for the right socket. Now, uh, sorry, right plug. Now this, um, oh, I've put it in upside down, it doesn't want to go. So what you want to do now is be careful when what to what you're plugging this in. So if you're using this to replace a PC power supply, for example, have a check on the back or maybe the existing lead if it came with uh, an actual factory sort of one of these and just make sure that it's the same rating. So if your PC is expecting, say, a, a 3 amp fuse, 
yeah, and you're using a 13 amp, you're giving it the ability to draw up to 10 amps more power than it was designed for in the event of a failure. And that could be bad news because it could set something on fire. So literally your power supply could go on fire. So we'll put that one aside there. That's great. That was the 13 amp. And sometimes, and we're going to have a look through here. Let's just have a little shufty. Yes, good. Good, good, good. Yes, there's lots of examples here. So we've got a few examples. So this one and this one, these are both rated 10 amps. So we've got basically a blind door here. So we will have to open this one up like our last one. And oh, didn't the fuse didn't come with it, unfortunately. But you could see it's a different color fuse. But that's a good thing in this case because brown is uh, 13 amps, but gray, boom, 10 amps. And that's a 10 amp plug. So I'm just going to pop that in there. That's a lot easier if you actually put the fuse into the plastic carrier. And make sure when you look in there, make sure that's sort of clean in there. And, you know, the contacts are good. If you think the contact could be a little loose, it doesn't really do any harm just to gently pinch it up a bit. Because if you've got bad uh, connection here and there's a high resistivity, you can get fires and a lot of heat. And if you look at one of my earlier videos, one of these actually melted down. Uh, on a, an actual sort of heater and that was pretty significantly badly melted. I, I was really shocked at seeing that one. Let's go on to the next one real quick. That's a 90 degree bend. That's gorgeous. They are incredibly useful. And by the way, if you've got any other, um, if you've got a meter and you've got any pl plug you're suspicious of, um, like you've got a foreign one and you're not sure if the earth is connected, you can also connect that, uh, test that up. You can test any of the pins actually this way, but always you can test this center pin here by shoving your probe in there and making sure you can see that earth there that's connected through. So you're happy with that. Now this is another 10 amp, but fortunately it's got a window. It's got a little magic window in there. That's a 10 amp, 10 amp wire. Great. No problem. Now five. Is this a five? This is a five amp. Let's see. Let's see what colors in there. So it's a kind of, we can see gray. We can see grey indeed. However, ooh, lucky enough, it's also a 5 amp. So, uh, it's an interesting colour scheme there, having the 10 and the 5 the same, but it doesn't uh, hurt to visually check. Just see what's written on there. Let's check the contacts. They're looking pretty good. We'll pop that back in. And then we've got our last one. I'm not going to bother with the Xbox ones because, uh, oh, I don't know, because I'm lazy, basically. And that's a magic window one as well, and that's five. In fact, why don't we? Why don't we just go look at the Xbox ones too? So what the Xbox is supposed to be? Hmm, that doesn't. Oh, there's a ten amp here, right down there in that corner. I can see a little ten amp, and uh, just going again. Flip the old fuse. Be careful with these. Actually, they are ceramic. You can break them uh, if you don't have spares. It can be a bit annoying. Uh, ten amp. We can see the ten amp there. Pop that back in, and the last one. And I'll tell you the actual dangerous um, mode. So this is the, that's a 10 amp as well. Good. Now, what you want to really look out for though, is if you've got the whole setup and wire says, say five amps. Yeah. And you've got a 13 amp fuse in there. You do not want a higher value fuse than the fitting and the cable can withstand. And the reason being, if you run your device like that, you are likely to have the ca cable could actually go on fire. Literally. So if, if it's designed to pull 13 amps, um, sorry, pull five amps, and you've got a 13 amp in there, you can imagine all of that extra current that it can draw will be really starting to fry these cables. These become in effect like a heater wire and uh, you're going to have a disaster. So always check that out and just make sure they're the uh, right values for the, the connect, the, the sort of plug. And then if you, if you're using the lead make sure the lead is the right value there the whole setup is the right value for the device you're plugging it into 13 amp arcade machine 13 amp wire 5 amp uh, desk lamp 5 amp setup 5 amp wire 5 amp fuse hope that's been of some use to you please like share subscribe keep safe and as ever thank you for watching